two phrases down. What's the third phrase? The next verse, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 18. Oh, I lost my place. This is a very little Bible. It took me forever to find Philippians in here. It's like, oh, God. oh praise the Lord. Ah, divine intervention right there. I have, standing in the pulpit, opened a closed book to look for a book in the Bible, and I, I swear it wasn't there. Uh, but anyway. John chapter 8, verse 18 says, I am he who testifies about myself. Jesus admits that he is testifying about himself. He is one of the two witnesses laying down the testimony about himself. And we've seen a glimpse of that. We've seen Jesus testify about himself with his I am statements. It's why I love the Gospel of John so much. It's why the Gospel of John is about who is Jesus. So we've seen the I am statements, and we've seen how it's rooted in Old Testament history and Moses at the burning bush. And we've looked at Jesus saying, I am the bread of life, and what all of that means in John chapter 6. We've just looked at John uh, chapter 8, verse 12, our scripture memory verse, which is about Jesus being the light of the world and that implications. Jesus is testifying about himself. And we've got five more to go through. He's the door of the sheep. We'll get to chapter 10, I'm sure, before Christmas probably. He's the good shepherd. He's the resurrection and the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And then, of course, he's the true vine. And these are all expressions of Jesus testifying about himself. He's making declarations of who he is. And it's important for us to listen to those because we tend to nitpick the parts of Jesus we like that meet our needs and ignore the parts of Jesus we don't. So it's all about Jesus, Savior, Savior, Savior. Please don't acknowledge that he is also Lord. Who is Jesus is important because... There's a fight between the biblical Jesus and the world's Jesus. And we have to, we have to acknowledge and accept a biblical Jesus. Because it's the biblical Jesus that is true. And all the false Jesuses are just trying to lead us astray. And when you have an intimate, passionate relationship with the one and only biblical Jesus... Well, then you have that transformative spiritual experience. And you have a changed spiritual journey for the rest of your lives. That's so many of us can testify about, right? Uh, praise the Lord for his protection. Thank you for not leaving fools alone. And you know I'm talking about myself. Let me lay down five actions about receiving salvation. Five actions for walking in sanctification. But receiving salvation has to come first. So, and then walking in sanctification. You have to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. Then you're walking in his holiness. So the first one comes straight out of Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, which we have looked at extensively and multiple times. And this is, of course, the two verses from Paul where he talks about believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth, and then you will be saved. And we've had that experience where we have believed in our heart and confessed with our mouth that we are the problem and Jesus, the Savior, is the solution. We are the disease and Jesus is the great physician and he's got the cure. We are drowning in an ocean of our own stinky wickedness and he's the lifeguard trying to rescue us from drowning. And that's an action that comes first. Putting your faith, your belief, your trust in Jesus Christ and experiencing that cleansing and that transformation. And then you can start walking in holiness. Receive the gift of salvation and then step into the partnership of increased holiness in our lives. Romans chapter 10. Now we get to Philippians chapter 2, which I have found. Even though the text in this Bible, I, when I was younger, the text in this Bible was a lot bigger. And of course, I've got progressive lenses, so it's all about finding the sweet spot, but it, we'll, we'll try. 
Number two of the actions is to pursue unity. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. For if, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. So let's pursue in our walk in holiness toward holiness, expressing the love of God that he has for us. Let's be like-minded. Let's be one in selfless and sacrificial love. Let's be one in spirit and mind. Unity is holiness. Division is sin. Number three, stop thinking about yourself. Even though everything about us and everything in the world tells us to. But let's be different. Let's be transformative. Let's be radical. And let's put other people's needs ahead of our own. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only at your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Others, others, others. Number four, live humbly and obey God's word. It's all about application, application, application. We choose to be prideful or humble. And we choose to obey or rebel against God's word. Ignoring God's word is, in fact, rebelling. And we've got a lot of experience, open wounds and scars from our experience of that. Chapter 2, verse 8. Be humble and obey. Fifth, last, the last one of the actions. The actions to receive Jesus and to walk in sanctification. Comes from verses 14 and 15. Uh-oh, let's see if I can find that. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. Stars in the midst of the void. How cool is that? Turns out, complaining is a sin. Lying is a sin. Blasphemy is a sin. But again, we pick the ones we like. L complaining, arguing, gossiping. I'm just passing on this prayer request. Is not an excuse to gossip. Let's Button it. Silence can be misunderstood, but it can never be misquoted. Words are one of those things that if you say it and it's stupid, and I've done it a 10,000 times, you can't gobble it back. So just... Your speech counts. We worship God with one mouth, and then we cut each other apart with the same mouth. Shame on us. Five actions. Fourth phrase. 